You may have noticed that this video is not coming out on the first. Uh, that is just another effort for me to keep the bar low. So well done me, or not. It's hard to say. I am somehow less prepared for this video than I was for the previous vlog, which is saying something because I didn't actually prepare for the first vlog. This isn't a desk. It's a piece of plywood on top of a sawhorse. I'm sitting on a bucket. And if you're wondering why my wall looks like it needs to be ironed, that's because there's a bed sheet hanging behind me. Ugh. My plan was to talk about the build videos that I did this month, or last month, January, whatever. Uh, I only put out one video, so I guess that's what I'm going to be talking about. I had planned to do a second video and I actually was gonna do something new. A one day build, welding for the first time. Well, it didn't go so well. D I hate myself. I welded this here. I was supposed to weld it here. So I may or may not be finishing that particular build. I don't know, I, I kind of messed it up. So we'll see if that turns into anything. I public. <laughs> You're so lucky you're made out of glass. I published my battle axe video, and while I'm really pleased with how the battle axe turned out, I hate the music with a fiery passion. What was supposed to be a very simple and not time-consuming re-recording of the music of the Game of Thrones turned out to be soul-crushing in so many ways. Turns out, if you haven't practiced the violin in 15 years, you probably aren't so very good at it. Also, if you've never learned how to play the cello, it's probably a bad time to record yourself learning how. Also, having the right microphone is really important for recording violins especially, which sound terrible so much of the time. Also, turns out GarageBand has limitations. Who knew? And lastly also, there is almost no point in time when this house is completely silent. Now, I don't want to go putting blame on anyone, but it's mostly to do with two people named, well, we'll just call them bike and men. But this is not a pity party for me. I got it done and I'm glad that I did it. There was no way that I could have done it better given my capabilities, the time I had, and the equipment. It, like every other build that I've ever done, turned out exactly as good as it could have. I tried it out, I thought I was going to be better at it, and I wasn't. Um, that's okay. It, you know, it turns out that a lot of things that I think I'm going to be good at, I'm not. And oddly enough, the things that I think I'm not going to be good at, I'm also not. So uh, I guess there's a learning lesson in there somewhere. Last month I told you about someone that I thought was pretty cool. That's Ellen. Ellen's pretty cool. And this month I'm going to tell you about someone else that is pretty cool. And that is Chris from Mount Phillip Metalworks. Did I say that right? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Instagram. Metal Works. Yes, that is correct. Chris from Mount Phillips Metal Works. Nope, it's singular Philip. There's only one Philip. Mount Phillip. The works is plural. Lots of works. Chris is a blacksmith and I got to meet him when I was at a blacksmithing event in upstate New York. I didn't know who he was and he recognized me as the girl who was in Brett's video. All right, little Alan Travis. We need that workspace. So it was a pretty pure meeting. It's kind of awesome. Chris is a really amazing person. He's a fantastic blacksmith and he is always the first in line to lend a helping hand. In fact, when he heard that I was getting into blacksmithing, he found an anvil for me. It's a beautiful fisher from 1929 and he set it aside because he knew that it was the anvil for me. Also, He made me this. 
This is a dragon plant. It is made out of wrought iron and it's gorgeous and I love it. And I feel like, like I won an award, like, I'd like to thank blacksmiths everywhere for existing so that I can learn blacksmithing because it's really all about me. And I know that I don't have much time, but I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. All right, on to the questions. If you travel so much on the coat heels of Travel Frog, will there be some segments to come there too? What's the next big build or thing you're excited for other than MC? Well, Travel Frog, we do have some plans, don't we? It has always been my goal to document my travels better than I have, and uh, I guess that's something I can work on considering Billiam wants to see it. So yes, I will do that. As for the next thing I'm excited for, I will be at WorkbenchCon at the end of February. I'm not there in any official capacity, but I will be there. And uh, if you are there, come say hi. You said this was your first collaboration build. How did you find it? Do you want to do more collaborations? If so, what sort of things do you want to build? Yes, it was my first proper collaboration, and I think that it went pretty well. Brett might have another opinion of it, but uh, you'll have to ask him. I think that the way that we did it is the way that I prefer collaborations to be, and that is we basically shot two separate videos of the same thing at the same time. While I was working on the weight plate, Brett was forging the spear tip, making the handle, and the pommel. Also, his video is really amazing and you should check it out. As for the other two questions, do I want to do more collaborations and what do I want to build? That totally depends on the person that I'm collaborating with. Generally speaking, I don't really want to work with anyone because I want to do all my own ideas because they are better than whatever you have. Obviously that's not true, but it also is kind of true. I don't really play that well with others, so collaborations can be hard. And as Brett found out, when I feel like I'm under the gun, I get a little bit stinky. Apparently, if you say things like, I don't understand what you're saying, that can be construed as hostile. So I'll, I'll work on that, but in reality, I won't work on that and I will probably continue to do the same thing. Did you go to design school? Are one of your parents or family members in the design construction field that influenced you guys into creating and making? No, I did not go to design school. I went to Santa Barbara City College for some semesters before they asked me to not come back. My parents and family members, nobody's really in design or construction except for Ben. He's kind of the outlier in the family. Uh, we've always been just encouraged to make things if we felt like it and use whatever materials we found. So the encouragement was there, but the background, not so much. Do you use the lesser known yoga poses mostly to hold stuff while making, etc., or do you find yourself doing that whenever? How many siblings do you have? Are you all makers? And how do you keep Gary from running off? Okay, first things first, lesser known yoga. It was a joke I started because I was realizing how awkward and strange I looked when I was trying to build things. I am a smallish sort of person and I don't have so much in the way of strength. So I had to get creative about how I held things together and uh, how much weight I could put on things in different ways. So I just made it into a silly thing where I said, oh, these are yoga poses that you didn't know about. So there's that. Uh, I have three siblings, two brothers and a sister, uh, along with some people that we adopted along the way. Um, I would say that we all make things, uh, but I don't think that any of us self-describe as being makers. And as for Gary, Gary comes and goes as he please. He's not owned by anyone. He's a free spirit. Where in the United States is Dingus? The question is not, where is Dingus? The question is, where isn't Dingus? Dingus is eating your ice cream. Since yesterday. I don't know. <laughs> no, I like ate mostly all of it. Dingus is leaving footprints on your toilet seat. How many cactuses have you fallen into? None, I just drove into it. Dingus is using your towel. Did you use my towel? Dingus is everywhere. Favorite ride or die tool, favorite color, building material you want to work with. 
I don't have a favorite tool. That's a lie. Angle grinder. Uh, my favorite color is Travel Frog. Building material? Mm, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. It all depends on what I want to make and uh, if the project is not going well, then it is my least favorite building material to work with. If it's going well, then eh, we're all right. Do your eyebrows have a mind of their own? If so, do they whisper secrets to you? They do have a mind of their own, and they only tell secrets to each other. Nobody keeps me in the loop. If you had one year and full funding, what would you build? Jamie, silly question. Serenity, duh. I want to know about the different shoe thing. Where, why, when did it all start? Well, technically it started when I stopped matching my socks because I couldn't find ones that matched. But more realistically, it probably started in my late teens, early teens. My sister and I would each buy a pair of shoes, same style but different colors, and switch them. And then when I started buying Converse in bulk, it just seemed like a waste to not make them, you know, individuals. Separate lives for separate shoes. Yeah. Will a video of the tiny house build be coming? Yes, Amy, it will. It will not be here. It will be on one of Ben's channels. So keep track of Homemade Modern and see what they're doing over there. He'll let you know what channel it's going to be on. I'm not exactly sure. How many brothers do you have? Do you live in the same place? I have two brothers, and up until a couple days ago, yes, we all lived together. Uh, one of them went back to Argentina, and the other one is currently in Boston, so, you know, they'll come back at some point, probably. I don't know. Maybe? Maybe I live alone now. Oh, hey. What's up, buddy? How's it going in here? It's going great. I slept for seven hours. Seven hours after, after, after you woke morning. up and slept for seven hours? Yeah. Good job. Don't tell the vlog that. It's all going in the vlog. I'm, gen <laughs> I'm generally pretty productive. I just slept in today and for the past few days. Cool. Uh, I can't find my phone. Do you mind calling it real fast? If it's, it's back to you. Calling oh you now. Okay. Did you find it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, also, I know this is probably terrible timing, but I've really got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to record while I'm doing that. We have two bathrooms. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll go, go use Go use the other bathroom. Oh, God. Where was I? Daryl asks, are there any creator slash maker skills you are focusing on for future projects? I don't really think that I have very many skills in the way of anything, so I will be focusing on all of them. How old are you? Old enough to know better. Now on to the big question. A lot of you agreed with me when I said that vlog wasn't actually a word. According to Doyle, who cited the Merriam-Webster dictionary, vlog is actually a word. Merriam-Webster, be ashamed. Also, I had a very lovely comment from someone named Throwaway. Vlog is a word. Just because you hate it doesn't make it any less real. English is a living language and as such it will change over time. Just like the word portmanteau was changed by Lewis Carroll in the book Through the Looking Glass, portmanteaus are real words regardless of anyone's preferences. Okay, so um, first off, it was the poem Jabberwocky that introduced the portmanteaus. Maybe not technically, but actually. And Jabberwocky, at least the first stanza of it, was published who, six years before Through the Looking Glass came out and was written probably another four years before that. That aside, it is true that we use portmanteau to mean two words pushed together rather than a leather carrying case as it was originally intended. That does not mean that we have to accept all portmanteaus as words as they are not. I'm not here to argue linguistics with you. I am not a philologist, although I did attend a conference that was a joint archeology span and philology conference in Chicago, but whatever, I digress. Also, yeah, 
English is a living language, but that doesn't mean that we can abandon all the rules and just start making things up. The day that I adopt vlog as a real word will be the same day that I accept that conversate is a word just because that's what people say. Come on, people. Have some standards. All I'm saying is that vlog is silly and I don't prefer it as a word. So, if any of you have a better idea of what we can call this video series, which will also still be called vlog because that's what people call it, and this is how language crumbles. Anyway, if you have ideas on what we can call it and can root your words in the traditional Greek or Latin, I am willing to hear you out. Also, throw away, don't be so stinky, this joke. What is your favorite book and why did you leave library science? Okay, so I was never a fully fledged library scientist. I did not go to school, but I did start volunteering at my public library at the age of eight. And then when I was 15, I got a work permit so that I could legally get a job there. So I worked at two different public libraries from the age of 15 to the age of 26. And then I moved to Switzerland. As for favorite books, my most long-standing favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird. But I would have to say that very close second, third, and fourth to that, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, and Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli. Okay, so I asked Instagram if they had any questions, so I'm gonna try and get through this pretty quick too. Barking Darrow, any advice for my eight-year-old niece who recently found interest in woodworking? Yes, my advice is do it. Like, there's nothing beyond that, just go for it. Whatever you wanna build, do it. And also, send me a photo, because I'd love to see it. D Castle says, video games, what are some of your favorite games spanning from when you were a kiddo? First off, I'm so happy that you said kiddo. It's one of my favorite words. Anyways, um, Final Fantasy III in the US, Final Fantasy VI in Japan, was my favorite video game of all time. I make it a rule not to have any gaming systems near me at any time because then that's all I do and I never do anything else. So, yeah. Damn it, Carissa says, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? That is an unanswerable question because after between 17 and 38 licks, you cut your tongue on the sharp candy. Jordan Zom says, is there a project you've been too scared to try yet? Yes, all of them. I am scared to try every single project that I undertake. Scrap Sapien says, why do you have nicer welding gear than I do? That's because my brother loves me more than he loves you. Sparky1993, what inspires you the most when you are making? Nothing inspires me. I am not an inspirational or inspired person. I just think of something that I need and then I make it, which is why I put out so few videos because there's not really a lot that I need. I'm working on that. Teddy A asks, when is your next Fool Fly video coming out? What do the Garys need? The Garys want for nothing. <sighs> they are self-sufficient little creatures. Also, full fly video, I don't know, but cross your fingers that something is going to happen in March. Don't quote me on it. Well, that's it for this month. It's a short month. I'm getting this video out late and I'll be gone for like five days in Atlanta. So who knows what I'm going to come up with, but I'll give you something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the verse. Ah, ah, ah. I never knew you had so much rage in you. What can I say? I'm the world's best actor. Second best. <gasps> Graduation day. Do you think we missed anything? I think we know everything she knows. Can I say something? Psych. <gasps> you played me. You played me.